So, to motivate today's concept, let me ask you, uh, let me th let us think of a setting. Suppose you are uh, you have you are managing an airport security, ok. Now, you want uh, to there are uh, say let us say two ways two roads to access the airport uh, and you have some n guards that you can keep at those at those roads. You have to decide who uh, how many guards at each airport ok. Now, the thing that you uh, what you could do is uh, you could sort of just say well I am going to keep equal number of guards at each and so on, but you also have some idea that let us say terrorists are likely to ap approach the airport from one particular road ok more likely to approach. So, or or, or let us say if a person is approaching uh, the airport from a particular road it is more it is it is like there is a certain chance that that person is actually a terrorist. So, the person that any person that comes into the airport is can be of one of three kinds he can be let us say he can be a terrorist or he can be a um, contraband uh, trafficker drug trafficker or something like that and uh, or he could be just an innocent traveler ok. Now, what you do not know is when you look at the person you do not know which of these three categories he lies in ok. But what you do know is well that in a sort of on in this along this road here is the chance that this is going to be a, a, a terrorist here on this road there is there is a certain chance that there is a some other chance that is going to be a terrorist and so on. So, basically what the the essen essential issue is that you do not know when you are confronting a, uh, a particular player a particular opponent you do not know whether that person is a terrorist or this or that ok. And you have to come up with an allocation strategy for your troops in such a way that works regardless of what the other what the other guy is right. So, now is this a game of uh, is there some there is clearly some lack of information here ok in the sense that you do not know the the identity of the person who is coming in or identity in the sense that you do not know which class he lies in is he is he uh, is he a terrorist or drug trafficker or an innocent traveler. But the fellow who is coming in he knows his identity right. Now, what can you uh, how can we model a game like this in what we have already studied and whether we can actually model a game. Uh, so, a situation like this in the frameworks that we have already studied. So, you the main thing I want to uh, point out is that see the when we talked of imperfect information so far, what a player did not know is what was happening during gameplay. So, the all the ignorance was something to do with what was happening during gameplay, he did not know the exact node you were on and therefore, he did not know he was on. And therefore, he did not know say let us say what someone else has acted or what who has acted and so on and so forth those kind of things were. So, it was the the the, the ignorance of the player was about stuff that has happened during the during the during gameplay which when during the time the actions were taken ok. Now, this kind of uncertainty where you do not know the identity of of the other player whether the other player is a terrorist or a drug trafficker or a innocent traveler this is not something this is not an uncertainty during gameplay right. So, it would have been an uncertainty during gameplay if to be a drug trafficker or to be a uh, or to be a, a terrorist or to be an innocent traveler was a part of that person's strategy. And uh, the, it was an action that he was choosing, and it's an action, and therefore, and you did not observe that action. Let's say, okay, but that is not the case here, right? The case is he's not choosing to be one or the other; he is one of the uh, one or the other. Okay, so what you see here is that there is actually a kind of a different type of lack of information that is going on here. There is a somewhere there is a 
the it's distinct from the from the ignorance that you have during gameplay because and that arise that arises because there is something that you cannot observe about what has happened during gameplay right whereas in this case the issue is the uncertainty is not about or the lack of knowledge is not about what has happened during the game but rather about what the game actually is you do not know whom you are playing against you do not know if you are playing against a drug trafficker or you are playing against a terrorist or are playing against an innocent traveler right and the policy that you would have how many troops you will have here or how many troops you will have there etc depend on that right but you have to decide eventually how to allocate your troops without that knowledge anyways is this clear okay so so there is a the, this this is this leads to a different form of uncertainty in in the game or different form of uh, lack of information in the game okay and that's so we distinguish this from the earlier thing earlier what we what the kind of uh, lack of information we were referring to was imperfect information so imperfect information referred to the situation where there was ignorance about so the ignorance was about events that have happened that have happened during gameplay okay so this kind of the kind of ignorance that i'm referring to the, uh, right now is what is called incomplete information so incomplete information is referring to the setting where actually there could be one of several types of several games or a player could be one of several types right and we and a player does not know which of those types is actually the true type but each player does know his own type right so when a terrorist comes he knows that he is a terrorist when and so on okay so this this requires a different way of modeling okay essentially this actually comes down to something that we studied at the start which is you know the mormon model of incomplete information was primarily about this if you remember the, there was this game of uh, john and paul paul was color blind or not color blind it is about that it's he, he, that was that was a situation of incomplete information because whether he is color blind or not is something that uh, that that player knew paul was color blind or not is something that paul knew but john did not know right so it it's not a, a sort of a decision to be color blind or not it was about uh, whether he is color blind or not and that essentially led to a situation where you did not know which where if if we didn't have a decision layer on top of it but if if they were say let's say betting on which car won and so on effectively it would have uh, the other player would have to bet taking into account that he does not know whether paul is color blind or not right so this needs a framework of its own okay and so these uh, so what i'll talk about today are these games okay these are games of incomplete information uh, so formally the way we define this is you have a set of players set of players n is your set of players okay now the each player has what we call a type okay and let ti be the set of types of player i now what is what is a type a type is basically his identity okay it can mean you know depending on uh, the situation at hand type can be anything it can be uh, let's say how much income he has how much uh, how how much he wants a particular item if he is a let's say in an auction for example a typical situation is an auction 
a seller wants to sell an item but he does not know how much the buyer how much that item is valuable for that buyer okay type is uh, is some you can more ge most generally it's some form of private information okay it's something that is known to that player alone but others do not know what it is all right so each player has a type a player knows his type is type but not the type of others okay he does not know the type of the other players all right now uh, the way the game proceeds is that nature chooses a profile of types okay with let's say probability distribution p so nature will choose a profile of types that means one type for each player with a probability distribution p this p we'll take as common knowledge okay anything that you do, uh, so this this p is uh, is something that is common knowledge so all players agree on the probability with which various types are going to be generated if there is any uh, asymmetry in this also then that can be modeled through another you know a more uh, another meta type essentially which we, on which they disagree again okay on which there is some uh, they, they they do not which something else that they do not know okay so so this probability distribution p and this this p is common knowledge okay so how does the game proceed so nature chooses t1 to tn which are the types of all players each player gets to see his own type so pi p1 sees sees t1 p2 sees t2 etc and pn sees sees tn okay now because p is common knowledge players do know the probability distribution with these which which these types are going to be realized and so they have effectively a belief about the types of other players all right so so the each player has as a belief about the types of the other players and the belief comes from let's say what is player i's belief of that the uh, the type of the other players is t minus i so if he so that the, the this this the answer to this question depends so if you if i ask you what is player i's belief that the others are of type t minus i now the answer to this question dep uh, depends on when it's when this belief is being computed so before the start of the game before nature distributes the types okay uh, or before the profile of types is realized what is the belief that players have about what is the belief that player i has about the types of the other players no no it's still p, it's it's p of t minus i right this is the probability with which i th player i would think that the type that the others have types given by t minus i it's the probability uh, you know it's the marginal probability of t minus i clear but then after the type is realized okay once nature chooses the types that means once it defines okay who's the who's the you know who has what talents or who has what endowments or who has what uh, luck or whatever once the types get realized okay what is what is what is going to be their belief exactly so this is what we've learned right if you have information what you should be doing is conditioning on that information you are so that's what a bayesian should do so so a player once he gets the information of his type 
he his belief now gets updated right his belief now is that well uh, so this is the let's say the ex ante belief ex ante means before the realization of ti So, before the game starts, this is what we know, this is it is going to be one of these, but once he once the once the types are realized, he still has an uncertainty about the types of others because he, he gets to observe only his type, right. So, this so after seeing his own type, this is going to be the belief you can say let us say exposed after realization of. Okay, so so now the essentially as uh, the theoretical question for us is what stage is the at you know at what stage is actually this game being played? Actions are being chosen after the types get realized. Okay, that's uh, that is correct, and that's understandable. But is the game being played before the types get realized, or is the game being played? after the types are realized. Each player knows his type correct, but he could still play in. So, if you remember the way how did we think of uh, how did we think of dynamic games? We said extensive form games is as if the player has to pick a strategy which is a function which maps every information set to action and his this strategy is chosen even before the game begins. Right. So, before the realization of any information, this strategy is, is, is to be chosen and we are playing this game in the space of strategies before, before the start of the game. No. no. So, so the question is should I be playing this game before the realization of the types knowing and come up with a plan for what I would do in each type or should I be playing this game after the realization of the type. See the reason the reason this is a slightly tricky question is because in each case your belief is different. Before the realize you your you know your payoff uh, or whatever etc. Uh, those uh, those functions are already well defined for you, but the belief is different in each case. In the first case you have a belief of which is the ex ante belief about the types of everyone of all players. Whereas, after the realization of the type your belief is conditioned on on the knowledge that you know your own type ok. So, let, this is this is not that straightforward a question actually and in fact, this is one of the main contributions of this line of uh, this line of research that, that gives you know it gives a lot of clarity to to this particular thing to this question yeah. Ha, so, ok. So, so, what happens after the types get realized? After the types get realized players now play it is it is it can be let us say it is it let us say it is a static game after that ok. So, they have some set of actions actions let us say static ok. It could be dynamic also, but you can take it to be static simple let us keep things simple. So, Ah, so, those are that, that's also there, but uh, let's for the moment let's just take it to be static. Okay, so in short, they have some finitely many actions that need to be chosen, and you can even have the actions dependent on the types. Okay, so in each type, the player could have a different set of actions. Like for example, the actions that are available to a terrorist is not the same as actions available to a uh, to a innocent traveler, and so on. Right. So each e you could have, a, but but the point is, you would have a set of actions for each type. And then uh, after that, there is uh, once the type gets uh, types get realized, the uh, you know it, it's a it's a usual game. So so actually, let me write out the full full chronology. The type the types get realized. Okay. The, so he now his player's belief after the type gets realized is p of t uh, t minus i given t i. All right. Then players select actions, 
actions uh, let us say ui in ui of ti ok. So, this is the set of actions set of actions of player i in type ti right and the players would get a player i gets payoff j i uh, or cost let us say incurs a cost j of t comma a where t is the vector of types t 1 to t n or oh sorry t comma u u is the vector of actions. So, this is the this is the cost to player i in type profile p and I and action profile u. Is this clear? So, if the vector of types is t and they take actions uh, um, uh, if the profile of types is t and the profile of actions is u then this is the payoff that player i gets all right. Now, what are the uh, what are the strategies of the player? Well, you can think of the strategies of the player now for player i is a function gamma i that maps his type to this union of actions overall overall types and you have to make sure that you take a feasible action in each this thing right. So, you have to gamma i of t i has to be belong has to belong to u i of t i for all for all i. So, every time so he has to take an action from what is available. All right. We can even allow randomization. So, let us take a behavioral strategy, behavioral strategy B, B uh, where he chooses an action U i in type T i. This, this is a, uh, this is going to be a probability distribution on U i of T i. Okay, this is your this is a this here is a pure strategy and this is a behavioral strategy. So, you can see here that is uh, once I write this out in this way it is uh, there is a sort of resemblance emerging with with games of imperfect information. It is as if the type is the information set of the player. Okay. And in fact, that is that is that was one of the main insights actually people did not know how to approach such games of incom incomplete information and uh, that they could be you know if you think if you in introduce nature into the picture okay, and if there is a common knowledge about uh, about the probability and you know a bunch of other axioms give you common knowledge about the probability etcetera. What that does is it basically reduces a game of incomplete information to one of imperfect information okay where the la the lack of information is essentially about the types of other players okay so suppose the uh, there are two players let's say player 1 and player 2 player 1 has let's say two types okay i got to write them as 1 1 1 and 1 2 and player 2 has only one type ok. And let us say these types 1 and 2 get uh, decided with uh, probability half each ok. So, probability of i 1 com 1 com 1 1 comma 2 is half probability of 1 2 comma 2 is also half. And after the uh, types are realized player the players have the actions that players have are uh, uh, so the action of set of player 1 is uh, let us say top and uh, he, he can choose let us say up and down 
up comma down is his action set and for uh, this is the same for every type and uh, in for player 2 the action set is left comma right yes, and this is what he has just a sing is he has only one so now can you tell me how do i uh, can i write this as a as a game of imperfect information so let's go through the cro uh, the chronology first nature is playing nature picks the types for everyone so the game begins actually at this node where nature is going to play we'll denote nature by no by a player 0 okay so nature picks a type profile how many type profiles are there there are two possible type profiles right 1 1 1 uh, 1 1 and 2 and 1 2 and 2 okay so one profile is this which is 1 1 and 2 this is one type profile the other is that there is 1 2 comma 2 okay now player 1 get, each player gets to observe his own type so now after this the game is uh, let's say a static game okay i i won't write out the matrix and all that but the game is a static game so now play uh, so let's say player 1 is playing here so player 1 had two choices up and down and after that player 2 has two choices left and right okay so now can you tell me what are the information sets of the players for let's start with player 1 this is for player 1 this is for player 2 what does player 1 know player 1 knows his own type right so he can distinguish between this node and this node right so for player 1 this is one information set this is another information set okay what about player 2 for player 2 he can, he again knows his own type but does not know the type of the other player okay so he for him what are the information sets all four in one information set Is this clear now why are all four in the same information set ah so because i have that uh, two reasons here one is that he is the he cannot see he uh, so the this is because player uh, player 2 okay cannot distinguish between the types of player 1 okay that is one second is he cannot observe i assume that the game is static after after the types get realized so he cannot distinguish between the actions of player 1 okay now suppose if he could distinguish between the actions okay say let's say he could tell whether the player 1 has played up or down then how what would be the information set hmm. everyone agrees with that what would be the information set in that case suppose he suppose player 2 could observe what player 1 is doing but does not know the type of player 1. So, he then what could I put in tell me what I should put in which ha huh, so both the use would be in one information set. So, this would be one information set and both the d's would be one in one information set is clear still he does not know the type of the player but he does observe the action he does not know the type of player one but he does observe his action is this clear okay so this is these this is the sort of game of incomplete information these are also popularly known as bayesian games okay so there is the term used for them called bayesian games and the reason for that will become clear uh, clear soon Now, I will just give you a window into what kind of issues that arise in this. See, for example, you know, suppose you are in this situation uh, like we have here, player can observe the action, but he does not know, uh, does not know what the type of the player is, right. So, just imagine a security situation, you know, you can observe someone's actions. You can observe that okay this is what he did this is what is this is what this is what he reported to me this is what he ticked on the form etc etc 
the question then for for the security officer is he wants to know what is the type right he wants to know from there from those from the reported whatever actions he can observe from there he wants to know what the type of the other player is is this fellow a terrorist is this fellow this is this fellow uh, is this fellow a uh, you know drug trafficker or is he just innocent right and from the point of view of the terrorist the problem is that how what kind of actions should i take that do not reveal my type right i should uh, from so the terrorist would always want to take an action that makes him no different from the innocent traveler makes him look no different from the innocent traveler the innocent traveler would want to take an action that that makes confirms him as an innocent traveler okay so you can see the the there is a, a a very interesting soup here of decision making and information that is both going on here because the kind of action that you take reveals something about what you know right it reveals something in this case what you know means what you know what you know in terms of your information set what what type were you born with okay so so actually there are very interesting questions that come up exactly because of this that what you know so now the the challenge in some sense for this uh, for the security this uh, protocol is to come up with a protocol that distinguishes between the types as as finely as possible so that you know can, can you get players to take actions that will eventually reveal reveal some signature about their type is it clear okay so we'll come to all of this uh, yeah, subsequently as we build through this because this is this is essentially a uh, it becomes uh, goes into the uh, into more and more into information and uh, into games and in, uh, the the informational aspects of games okay all right so okay so all right so now let's come back to our this thing uh, so players select actions these are the payoffs that they get and these are the strategies that you need to take okay so now let's write out the two the payoffs as as i said there are two stages at which we can we can uh, describe the game all right so first let's write out there are uh, first let's write out the payoff after all the types are realized okay the, there is a payoff that's a so we or we have a cost function here which is a function of the uh, which is a function of the types and the actions all right now and we have allowed for players to choose their actions random randomly you know do randomization in as a behavioral strategy okay so now let's write out first this thing which is this is ji of b given t so this is b1 one you want t1 all the way bn action un given tn okay so this here the uh, randomize this is the randomization that occurs due to the random choice of the action due to the players randomizing okay there is no natural randomization here from nature this is a type profile has been realized players are playing randomly and that randomization is uh, results in an uh, this is the expectation that is due to the, over that randomization okay so uh, i should be summing up here over over all these uis okay each ui in capital ui of ti and for all i in for for all i in n clear now this is the this is the payoff that would get real that would be observable to what player or, or rather uh, at what time sorry at what stage so this is the payoff for player i when does player i come get to see this play, payoff so nature has chosen the type players see their own see their own types then take their actions okay or to do some randomization randomly choose their actions the expectation over all that has been taken so when do they get when do this player i get to see this 
the answer is never the reason is because to know to to a certain to see this payoff you need to know the types of the entire type profile this player this payoff is never seen because no player gets to see all types the, rather the types of all players okay so this is just a notional thing this is an intermediate uh, calculation related object okay so now the if this is so in short if this were the type that type profile that nature picked and this is what the players played b1 b1 to bn is what the players played then this would be the payoff all right now so now you can average over what the nature would pick and say well take expectation of the above so that is this okay so this here is the payoff uh, is the is is what this now tell me when is this payoff seen when is jio b seen uh you sorry where oh, yeah this is p of t what am i writing yeah so when is this payoff seen this is the payoff that is seen before the start of the game before the types get realized right before because before the types get realized i don't know what the types are i'm taking the expectation over all possible scenarios okay assuming players are playing these behavioral strategies one for you know for each type okay, so this is the payoff before the types are realized this one here is the payoff to uh, after essentially is kind of a play payoff that is seen only to an observer of the game you know who sees all the types okay all right now there is therefore an inter interim payoff which is seen by each player okay that is this quantity which is j of bi given ti so the interim payoff is now that i condition on what i know so this and i take expectation over what i don't know okay and what is p of t minus i given ti well this is this is p of t divided by okay and clearly these two are related you can see this there is a relation between these two here and the uh, the relation is that ji of b is equal to p of um, ti okay fine all right so so actually so in the theory of uh, these kind of in games of incomplete information the basic question one has to ask is where, where are we are analyzing the game so are we analyzing the game here as i said which is at the start of the game the way we analyze dynamic games in general and or are we analyzing the game here where players are are you know kind of are aware of their type and now are now optimizing this okay max uh, the, max uh, this is the uh, cost or payoff that they are faced with and essentially this is a question of some form of delayed commitment uh, where is that yeah 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 t is ti comma t minus i ti comma t minus i right so essentially the it's a this is a similar essentially a question of delayed commitment because we whether you Uh, whether you play here or whether you play here okay for, so one is delayed commitment the second is uh, the you know does it uh, i mean you can uh, is it act, so so actually i should uh, correct myself it's not, delayed it is a form of delayed commitment type question but that also needs to be established because it, does playing at this stage before the start of the game can that 
include in it as a special case delaying until we see this, until you see your own type, right. So, so the broad question is, is there some way by in which the are these, do these two ways of looking at the game lead to two different answers? If these two lead to two different answers, then we are in trouble because then it means that we need to, we, we need to decide which, which of the two is really our game. Is this the game or is this the game? Okay. So, now the incredible thing actually is that this, it turns out that these two are in fact, you know, equivalent. You can, you can view the game in this way and look for a Nash equilibrium in the space of B's. Or you can view the game in this way and again look for the Nash, Nash equilibrium in the space of these. They are actually equivalent. Okay. Now, this, this here, this particular Nash equilibrium, uh, a, a, a Nash equilibrium in which we are look where players act after the knowledge of their types, uh, sorry, uh, are, are sort of choosing their strategies after the knowledge of their types. This, this, this sort of thing is what is called a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, okay. Whereas this, a game at this level is what is called a Nash equilibrium, okay.